area now because Peter Brock has just pulled in for his scheduled pit stop. It's a scheduled pit stop, Gary, that's right. It will take four tyres, three churns. David Oxton standing by to see whether he can get his uh, first drive here at Bathurst. But uh, it depends entirely on how Peter Brock is feeling. It looks at this stage as though Peter Brock is going to stay in the car. It's been a pretty quick stop so far. Fuel still being added. He's away in 24.53 seconds. That's sensational. That's something like... 10 seconds quicker than the Jaguar, so Brock will be very, very happy with that. And obviously, as you saw, he decided to stay in the car, so David Oxton will have to wait another 30 or so laps before he gets his chance. It's pretty hard to dislodge Peter Brock from the driver's seat, I'll tell you. Well, I think uh, if Brock's uh, fortunes continue uh, the way things are going at the moment, the real question of this is going to be the co-driver because we all know that Brock could run around here uh, all day, but uh, of course he's brought David Oxton into his, um, his team for the James Hardy race this year, and it will require his co-driver to put up almost the same lap time. Well, Neil may correct me, but I think the only thing we've seen of David Oxton previously has been in formula racing uh, in Australia, not in touring cars. Uh, they are a different kettle of fish. He's a pretty handy steerer, um, and he's got... Oh. Oh. Gee, that was a little bit uh, Rough. shaky through there. <laughs> uh, he's got to do a, a minimum uh, hour in the car. And uh, as Mike said, that may very well tell the tale. But I guess, uh, Neil, that applies not just to the uh, 05 car, but to a lot of cars here today. Yes, this is where we'll see the co-drivers come into their own, though, with guys like, for example, Neil Lowe and Kent Bajan. It's a very even combination. David Oxton, though, don't write him off. This guy's a very quick peddler. Oh, he's done a lot, of, uh, a lot of racing in Mondial and Formula 5000, and he's teamed up with Brock in New Zealand before when they've run over there and won. And his performance at Sandown was very good in practice. His performance here has been very good, although he hasn't had a lot of laps in the car. Brock's dodging all over the place here at the moment, trying to get these new tyres to settle in and scuff the sheen off the surface. Second dealer team car is going to come in shortly too. Johnny Harvey will get out of the car and David Parsons will take the wheel. Tim Slako in the pits from Western Australia in the Rover together with Mike Bergman in the Commodore. Yes, one. Oh, trouble! Oh, oh, up at Hell Corner, there's a hell of a pile-up. Oh. It's two of the BMWs. Richards and Fury. It's Fury in the Crichton car at the moment with the red helmet on. Unbelievably bad luck for the JPS team. There's another car sandwiched in there. Well, that's the Davison Kramer Mustang, which has been there since the start of the race. Oh, the teammates. Goodness me, the BMWs have put themselves out of business. That's incredible. How on earth could you do that? Well, Jim had to jump out of the car at Sandown to plug in a relay in car number one. Now he has to jump out of the car at Bathurst to push his teammate out of the sand pit. I'll tell you what, that'll be tough going to get it out of there. I don't think they'll do it somehow. Look, Jim's digging with his hands. Goodness me. Frantic, furious disappointment for Jim Richards and for George Fury. They both exit the car and Jim says, come on, George, get down on your knees and dig. What incredibly well, bad luck because Jim Richards just went past the our commentary position. Richards was leading the race. Richards was the man that went off first. They must have had a touch, surely. There was somebody's touch. Either that or there has to be some oil on the circuit. We've seen one or two other cars slip and slide there at that point. I wonder if we can see any skid marks and things prior to that. No, they well, don't really. There have been a few off well, uh, on the exit to the corner. I wonder what the marks there are uh, coming out of the pit lane. Anyway, it's very hard to tell. You could sit here all morning and wonder exactly what's taken place. George and Jim in conversation about just how you extract two $225,000 BMWs from the sand trap. Well, the Fury uh, Crichton car looks as though they might be able to get it out with a little more ease than the other one. But the sand traps were built there for a purpose. The thing is, I... I haven't got the rule book at hand at the moment, but I don't think they, they can't can accept have any, assistance. any outside assistance. They have to get them out themselves. Yeah, but can Fury assist Richards or vice versa? Now we're really getting technical. Yeah, we are getting technical. They can't accept any help from, from uh, flag marshals or from anybody else. But whether or not the teammates can help each other remains to be seen. I don't know. But, well, uh, they've had an incredibly good run all year, but all of their bad luck has lobbed in one hit and swiping two cars at once. Jim Richards was the race leader at the time in car number one but that's put paid to uh, his chances uh, his francovic robbie francovic from new zealand in the pits